أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين نشكره على آلائه ونعمائه وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له إلها أحدا فردا صمدا قيوما لم يتخذ صاحبة ولا ولدا وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله ولو كره المشركون اللهم صل على محمد عبدك ونبيك وخيرتك من خلقك وحافظ سرك ومبلغ رسالاتك اللهم وصل على أخيه أمير المؤمنين وقائد الغر المحجلين علي بن أبي طالب اللهم وصل على البضعة الطاهرة الصديقة الكبرى فاطمة الزهراء سيدة نساء العالمين اللهم صل على سبطي الرحمة وإمامي الهدى الحسن والحسين سيدي شباب أهل الجنة اللهم وصل على أئمة المسلمين علي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي والحجة القائم المهدي أجل الله تعالى فرجه وسهل مخرجه وجعلنا من أنصاره وأعوانه والمستشهدين بين يديه اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد ابعد الله أوصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله عز وجل My dear brothers and sisters The last two weeks We commemorated the tragedy of Karbala, we commemorated the legacy of an Imam al Hussein salawatullahi alayhi. This Imam who led the most important revolution in history. I would like to spend some moments analyzing the results of the revolution of the Imam alayhi salam. If you want to gauge the success of a revolution, you look at the results you examine the consequences. We find that one of the most important objectives and goals of Imam Hussein alayhi salam in leading that divine revolution was that he wanted to separate between good and evil, justice and injustice. He wanted to separate between the true religion of God and the superficial religion that people try to exploit for their own personal agendas. This was a very important message by Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. Because Yazid, may Allah curse him, he claimed to be sitting in the seat of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa He claimed to represent the religion of Islam. This is the religion of God. And many people were fooled. They were brainwashed into thinking that indeed, he represents the religion of God. Imam al Hussein alayhi salam rose to make it very clear to the world that this man does not represent the true religion. Do not be brainwashed. Today we have a big problem, my dear brothers and sisters. There are many people who doubt God's religion. There are many Muslims, by the way, who have doubts about the religion. There are many reasons why people have doubts. But you know, according to research, studies, and surveys, what the most important factor is? The most important factor that pushes people away from religion is what I call the malpractice of Muslims. Now you might be surprised that I'm using this term because usually we use the term malpractice to, prof to refer to someone who's a professional, right? And they don't go by the law. Someone who claims to be a doctor who's not really a qualified doctor. Someone who acts as a lawyer, but they're not doing their job professionally. A doctor who does not observe the proper, proper policies of being a doctor. We call this malpractice, right? But there are Muslims, my dear brothers and sisters, who commit malpractice every single day. When we follow this religion, we have to be professional about it. There are standards that we have to observe. When we don't observe those standards, we are ruining the message of Islam, my dear brothers and sisters. The Imam السلام, teaches a very important lesson. Never allow your negative actions to ruin the image of religion because that pushes people away. 
Most people who are pushed away from religion, it's not because they have a problem with a verse in the Quran. Maybe some do, they misunderstand some verses. But most people, most people who have doubts about the religion, it's not because they have a problem with something in the Quran. They don't have a problem with the Prophet They don't have a problem with Imam Ali. They do not have a problem with Imam Hussein. Where's their problem? With those who claim to be following them. They tell you, see, historically people who are religious, look at the crimes they've committed. People who are religious in the name of religion, what they've done. People who act religious, but they judge others, they're arrogant, they push others away. This is what makes many people doubt religion. Is this really the religion of God? Why is it in a mess then? A few years ago, I was in Canada. We had an interfaith program. And one of those who attended, he was a Christian young man. He told me, I have a question. Is it okay if I'm honest with you, frank, direct? I said, yes, of course. Tell us what's on your mind. He said, I have a very simple question. Right now you described to us Islam. It's beautiful. The way you described it is amazing. The verses you shared with us are amazing. Theoretically it's beautiful, but I have one objection. Why is Islam in a mess today? Why is Islam in a mess? That's my objection. I told him I agree with your ob objection halfway. And I'll correct it for you. Islam is not in a mess. Muslims are in a mess. It's not fair for you to say Islam is in a mess. And you know why Muslims are in a mess? Muslims are in a mess because they're not practicing Islam. That's why. Because they have turned away from the Holy Quran. That's why they're in a mess. But when you look at history, when Muslims, they appreciated the Holy Quran in certain periods of our history, they gave value to science, education, and knowledge. They were the pioneers of the world. But the day that they started to turn away from the Qur'an, yes, you see the Muslim world is in a mess today. Because they have turned away from the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's not fair for you to say Islam is in a mess. And by the way, this is a problem not confined to the religion of Islam. All religions. If you look at the history of Christianity, you know, there were times, centuries ago, when there were scientists, doctors, thinkers, philosophers, they would be burned alive at the stake in Rome by the orders of who? Daesh? ISIS? Al-Qaeda? By who? By the Pope, the head of the Catholic Church. Let's not forget that. Does that mean that the path of Prophet Jesus is a bad path? No. The nature of human beings is to abuse everything they can get their hands on. Money we abuse it, doesn't mean money is bad. Power we abuse it, doesn't mean power is bad. Religion is also abused, it's not an exception. It doesn't mean religion is bad. It means people have a tendency to exploit everything they can get their hands on. And that is why they try to counterfeit religion. Because religion is, is real. That's an indication that it is real. I'll give you an example. Have you seen someone or have you heard in the news someone counterfeiting a $200 bill? Have you heard of that? Do people do that? No. Why not? A $200 bill. A fake $200 bill. Does anybody counterfeit that? No. Why not? It doesn't exist. What's the point? Why would you counter a two, $300 bill when it does not exist? When they counterfeit a bill, it's a bill that actually exists. A hundred dollar bill, yes. A fifty dollar bill, yes. Those who try to hijack religion and misuse religion, that in itself tells you religion is real. That's why there are people who are trying to misuse it. Because it is real. They use it for their own cause, for their own advantages. There is truth to it. The religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the message of Al Imam Al Hussein. Salam, my dear brothers and sisters, through our actions, let us carry the torch of Al Imam Al Hussein, which is a humanitarian torch. It's a torch of guidance for everyone. Imagine Imam Al Hussein salam, was martyred thirsty. He and his family members were denied water. But you know, Imam Hussein, just days prior to that, when he arrived at the river of Furat, and Al Hur arrived with his strong men with his army, the Imam had access to the river. His enemies on the other side did not have access. 
You know what Aba Abdullah did? Salamullah alayka ba, ya Aba Abdullah. What a compassionate heart do you have? When the Imam had access to the river, he gave them water, one by one. He did not say, no, you're here to kill me. I will deny you water. In fact, the Imam took it even a step further. Under the hot sun, the Imam realized their horses, their animals were getting dehydrated. They were thirsty, they needed water. The Imam would take water himself and he would spray it on the horses. The world needs to know this, my dear brothers and sisters. The world needs to know the humanitarian side of the revolution of Imam al Hussein salam. But it is our obligation to carry that in society, to give a good image of the revolution of the Imam, of the Imams of Ahlul Bayt, of this wonderful religion. And I would like to share with you one quick example that is truly a source of pride for this community, for the Muslim communities and all Muslims around the world. Just yesterday, CNN released one of their heroes. And one of their heroes is one of the members of this community. Zaman International under the leadership of Hajj Najah Bazzi. My dear brothers and sisters, this is a fine example of how you take the message of Al Imam Al Zaman, Al Imam Al Hujjah, the Imams of Ahl Al Bayt, Al Imam Al Hussein, the religion of Islam, and you show to the world what kind of humanitarian religion we have. Because the world is not seeing it. A couple of years ago, there was a program at the Islamic Center of America. Debbie Stavina had come, the senator. And she met with 40 or 50 Shia and Sunni religious leaders to hear their concerns. Do they have any suggestions? Are they struggling with anything in their mosques, in their communities? One of those Imams present there asked her a very interesting question. He told her, okay, you've heard us. I have a question for you. What advice do you give us? Do you have any suggestions for us? Interesting question. She thought for a moment, she said something very interesting. She said, I know you Muslims have a wonderful faith and you have a lot of humanitarian work. But I'll be very honest with you, Americans are not seeing it like other minorities. When the Jews do something, they have a soup kitchen, they have a project at the synagogue. All Americans know about it. But you Muslims, we know you're doing a lot of good things, but we cannot see it. Yes, there are reasons for that. Of course, there is a, there's the factor of the media that does not usually highlight the positives of our communities. That's a challenge. But she was saying, you have, to, you have to do more. Let the world know about your activities. Let Americans see your humanitarian activities, your community projects. This is something that Americans need to see more so they can better understand the religion of Islam. This is one of the most important lessons we learned from Imam al Hussein sallallahu And he teaches you sacrifice. Give all that you have for Allah and don't worry about it. Allah will take care of you. Imagine 1,380 years ago, on such a day, on such a day, there were bodies on the land of Karbala. Just bodies, mutilated bodies. Not one person to pass by to care about Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Until the tribe of Bani Asad with Imam Zain al-Abidin alayhi salam, they bury those bodies. Imagine, if you look at it in those early days, you would say it was a failure. Did the Imam fail? But now, 1,380 years later, see, next month in the Arba'een, more than 20 million people will walk on their feet to honor the legacy of Aba Abdullah al Hussein. Contrast these two scenes. One day is in Karbala. It's a dark desert. It's a quiet desert. No one is there. But now today, see what's happening in the world. And this is a lesson that when you do business with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you give to Allah, when you sacrifice for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will give you everything in this world and on the day of judgment. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to illuminate our hearts with the message of Abi Abdullah al Hussein salawatullahi alayhi. A few quick announcements, my dear brothers and sisters. First of all, on behalf of my respected father, who was a little bit sick today, he could not be with us and the Islamic Institute of America, and in the name of the entire community, I would like to thank you all for supporting the programs of Imam al Hussein salawatullahi alayhi in this community. All those who volunteered, who helped, who participated, who did anything, and really this community made us proud the last two weeks, my dear brothers and sisters. 
through their support, through their encouragement. We had wonderful programs in all of our religious institutions. We had wonderful programs the last two weeks. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward all of you for your amazing dedication and participation the last two weeks. Secondly, my dear brothers and sisters, tonight at 8.30 p.m., the MYC is going to present a reenactment of what happened in Karbala. This is a play that you do not want to miss, my dear brothers and sisters. Bring your children, bring your families, bring your fr friends, so you could see what happened on the day of Ashura. Come early, so you will have, inshallah, a place to observe the reenactment in the auditorium. Finally, my dear brothers and sisters, this Sunday at 10 a.m., the Sunday breakfast will resume. And at 11, we will have the Sunday lecture in English, inshallah. So bring your families, and inshallah, on Sunday, we will live with the principles of the Holy Quran. Allahumma ghfir lil mu'mineen wal mu'minat, wal muslimin wal muslimat, al ahya'i minhum wal amwat. تابع اللهم بيننا وبينهم بالخيرات إنك مجيب الدعوات إنك قاضي الحاجات إنك على كل شيء قدير Let's now recite Surah Al-Fatiha for the souls of the mu'mineen and mu'minat بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إسلامك من الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن علي ولي الله أشهد أن علي أمير المؤمنين حجة الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح حي على خير العمل حي على خير العمل قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله يا قد أتاك المسيء أنت المحسن وأنا المسيء فتجاوز عن قبيح ما تعلم مني يا ذا الجلال والإكرام الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يسبح لله ما في السماوات وما في الأرض الملك القدوس العزيز الحكيم هو الذي بعث في الأميين رسولا منهم يتلو عليهم آياته ويزكيهم ويعلمهم الكتاب والحكمة وإن كانوا من قبل لفي ضلال مبين وآخرين منهم لما يلحق بهم وهو العزيز الحكيم ذلك فضل الله يؤتيه من يشاء والله ذو الفضل العظيم
مثل الذين حملوا التوراة ثم لم يحملوها كمثل الحمار يحمل أسفارا كمثل الحمار يحمل أسفارا بئس مثل القوم الذين كذبوا بآيات الله والله لا يهدي القوم الظالمين قل يا أيها الذين هادوا إن زعمتم أنكم أولياء لله من دون الناس فتمنوا الموت إن كنتم صادقين ولا يتمنونه أبدا بما قدمت أيديهم والله عليم بالظالمين قل إن الموت الذي تفرون منه فإنه ملاقيكم ثم تردون إلى عالم الغيب والشهادة فينبئكم بما كنتم تعملون يا أيها الذين آمنوا إذا نودي للصلاة من يوم الجمعة فاسعوا إلى ذكر الله وذروا البيع ذلكم خير لكم إن كنتم تعلمون فإذا قضيت الصلاة فانتشروا في الأرض وابتغوا من فضل الله واذكروا الله كثيرا لعلكم تفلحون وإذا رأوا تجارة أو لهوا انفضوا إليها وتركوك قائما قل ما عند الله خير من اللهو ومن التجارة والله خير الرازقين الله أكبر اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجهم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب الله أكبر سبحان ربي العظيم وبحمده اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر سبحان ربي الأعلى وبحمده اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد الله أكبر استغفر الله ربي وأتوب إليه الله أكبر سبحان ربي الأعلى وبحمده اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد الله أكبر بحول الله وقوته أقوم وأقعد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد الله أكبر سبحانه العظيم وبحمده اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجهم اللهم كن لوليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين الله أكبر سبحان ربي الأعلى وبحمده اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد الله أكبر استغفر الله ربي وأتوب إليه الله أكبر سبحان ربي الأعلى وبحمده سبحان الله سبحان الله سبحان الله اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجهم اللهم ارزقنا الراحة عند الموت والمغفرة بعد الموت والعفو عند الحساب الله أكبر بسم الله وبالله والحمد لله وخير الأسماء لله 
أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد السلام عليك أيها النبي ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام علينا وعلى عباد الله الصالحين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر الله